There are moments you can experience as an artist where something sends you in the direction you are always hoping to be. A direction that completely transforms your practice and gives you a creative confidence you've never had before. For me in my own journey, a massive part of this was to do with my sketchbooks. Each of these sketchbooks show a different stage of the evolution I've gone through as an artist over the past couple of years. And this led to a moment of epiphany that I'll be sharing later in this video. The earliest sketchbook contains mainly observational drawings, things generally not my own, such as artist studies and so on. From my perspective now, I'd actually say this is the most dangerous stage to be in because it's extremely easy to continuously produce aesthetically pleasing sketchbook pages and get lost in the voices of other creatives. When you get to a point of being able to quite accurately mimic artists you admire, whether that be their mark making, colour, character design or so on, there's a risk of becoming quite addicted to this, kind of creating a false confidence and delusion that if you can somewhat mimic their style, you can also create something of the same magnitude. Now I'm all about optimism and encouragement, but simply copying an artist's works well does not mean you can create work that is original to the same standard. This leads into the next sketchbooks, a stage of my practice where I'm slowly trying to take things that I'm learning and enjoying a new medium gouache, which, spoiler warning, will become an absolutely beloved medium for me later on. But with these sketchbooks, I'm starting to play with my imagination a little bit albeit quite terribly sometimes, very corny at other times, and still getting caught up in other artists' tropes, whether that be compositions, mark making, and so on. When you've spent too much time copying, there's an awkward stage where it's hard to break free of those you admire, and they come through a bit too strongly. Just don't worry about that. Keep drawing, making, creating. And a word of practical advice, try to frequently draw without any references whatsoever. Start to work out your imagination a little bit. I know, I know, I know the stuff that you'll come up with at first will make you gag as an artist, I get it. I've been there, but you can't build strength if you never pick up a weight or a pencil in this case. Now, these three sketchbooks is, this is where the magic starts to happen. And in one of these sketchbooks is that massive turning point I spoke about at the beginning of the video. From learning how to draw effectively from observation, studying other artists and struggling with imaginative drawing, the fruits of my effort begin to show here. And this is the point where I managed to shrug off everything I'd been so obsessed with so far and sparks of my own imagination began to poke through. I'd been using gouache long enough now that it had become my primary medium for sketchbook work, practically because it was quick and easy to get out, put away and I could layer it in a similar manner to oil paint, which is what all of my work was primarily influencing. I can't stress the importance of finding mediums that you enjoy. If someone had forced charcoal and soft pastels on me every day, I can't lie, I'd probably quit being an artist that long time ago. Personally, I just can't stand those dusty mediums. Anyways. The bulk of these sketchbooks look very different to the earlier works. Most pieces here are actually imaginative, or a combination of a reference with my imagination or a transformation of an artist's work. So essentially I'm still studying other artists' work and using references at times, but my own painting language is starting to emerge. There's a particular piece in this sketchbook where something really, really clicked for me. I was in a standard studio setting where we had a model and I just finished a color study of a Gauguin painting. Using a Gauguin influenced color scheme, I then transformed the scene in front of me into this imaginary internal world where a dominant figure lay pondering in a landscape and in the background a strange monster on a leash was being led somewhere. The whole process of completely transforming what was really quite a boring setting into this fantasy landscape was just incredibly enjoyable. 
and just artistically speaking, it worked. I realized I could build a whole world of my own and tell stories through characters that may or may not represent things that are dear to me, questions I have, fears, hopes, and more. I believe that great artists find ways to connect with people and I've just found my way. Now the reality is this way of working might not actually work for you. And this is how I've come to kind of my own way of working. And I'm sure a big part of it is actually my love for manga. These, this idea of, you know, mangakas creating their whole universes and getting their audiences so attached to characters that are loved and cared about who end up dying half the time. But yeah, you have to find your own way. Hello everyone, reporting at 1am from my editing abode. I have just finished a very exciting project of like digitizing my sketchbooks. So I now have over a hundred pages of notes, sketches, paintings, all put together in a high quality kind of publication that is now available. Oh, yeah. So if you're interested, please do click the link in the description. And thank you very much for watching. Here is my awkward goodbye. <laughs>